Recall from the warm-up activity, when we're looking at the power series summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n as a function, its interval of convergence was between negative 1 and positive 1. That's the domain of the function, which means if I were to plug in anything in between uh, negative 1 and positive 1 into the series, add up all the terms, it would have a finite number. That's your y value. You plot those two points, and it turns out that function is continuous and differentiable on that interval of convergence. And this is true for any power series on its interval of convergence. Okay, all right then. That means that we could, if we wanted to, take the derivative and the antiderivative of a power series, right? We're thinking of it as like this infinitely long polynomial, so it's basically just the power rule. Here, let's take a look. Find the the derivative of f of x is equal to summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Then find the interval of convergence of that derivative. All right, so let me first expand this out a little bit. So I'll write f of x is equal to, I plug in a 0 for my n here. I'd have x to the 0 power, which is x, right? No, it's just 1. Come on. It's 1, anything to the 0 power. And then plug in a 1, I get an x, then an x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. When should I stop? Just tell me when. How about here, x to the n? Nope, got to keep going. Doop, doop, doop. All right, so now let's take its derivative. Term by term. This is a big polynomial. Shouldn't take too long. All right, so the derivative of 1 is uh, 0, and then... Derivative of x is just 1, and then we have a 2x, a 3x squared, a 4x to the third. Hey, that does look like the power rule, which means on this nth term, it's just n x to the n minus 1. And then it still keeps going, right? Okay, so let's see if we can write this summation here. Doop, doop, doop. All right, well, here, notice that we had a first term that was... 1, we took its derivative, it's 0 here, but this is that what, that's what would happen if we plug in n equals 0, right? And this one is n equals 1, n equals 2, and then so on. So if you look right here with this n equals 2, if you plug in a 2 here, that'd be a 2, and then x to the 2 minus 1, and that's what you get. If you plug in a 1, 1 x to the 1 minus 1 to the 0 power, it's this thing. So we're going to leave off this term, and we're going to start with this one here, which is, hey, no, let's go back to blue, n equals 1 to infinity instead of 0. And then we have our generic term of x of n times x to the n minus 1 power. There you go. So yeah, we did it term by term. But really, all we had to do is, just on the generic term here, we could just take the derivative of that using the power rule, and uh, we lose a term, right? We, lose, we lost the term here because that derivative of that first one was just 0. All right, what's next is finding the interval of convergence. Now, notice that even though the original one was geometric in nature, this one's not geometric in nature because we have this little n out front there. All right, if it was a constant number, then we'd be good, but it's not, it's not geometric. So, hey, gosh, how do I find the interval of convergence then? Oh yeah, it's the ratio test. Ratio test. All right, so I'm gonna take the limit as n goes to infinity. I take the absolute value of the n plus one term over the nth term. So I'm gonna have on top n plus one, Burp, burp, times x to the n minus 1 plus 1, which makes to the nth power, divided by just the nth term, which is n, x to the n minus 1 absolute value, and then simplify some stuff. Now, as far as the n plus 1 and the n, those are all positive numbers that can come out of the absolute value. So we have n plus 1 over n, and then whenever I... Uh, Subtract these two exponents here. It is, let me do this in 
in red right over here. I have n minus parentheses, n minus 1. Distribute your negative, n minus n plus 1. The n's cancel, and you just get x to the first power there. Still in the absolute value. All right, so when now when I take the limit, limit only affects the n's, but the limit as n goes to infinity of that quantity is just 1 by L'Hopital's rule which gives us just the absolute value of x by the ratio test. If we want it to converge, it must be less than 1. That looks familiar. Sandwich that x in between a negative and a positive one. Should be good. Now, I also have to uh, test the endpoints, right? Again, it wasn't geometric anymore, so I do have to test the endpoints here. So let's start with x is equal to negative 1 and see what happens. Remember, all you do here is in the formula for your x, you plug in a negative 1. So I would have the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of, still have this n out front, but now I have a negative 1 to the n minus 1th power. What is that? Well, it's alternating. Right, this is an alternating series because of the alternator that's right there. Alternating series test. Okay, so the first part is that your terms, your indiv individual terms, that thing has to be positive, which it is. It's starting at one. All right, so that's good to go. And then if you take the limit of that thing as n goes to infinity, it's supposed to go down to zero. That one doesn't, right? So we take the limit as n goes to infinity of just n. That's equal to infinity. That diverges. Therefore, this thing is going to diverge. Diverge. So remember that alternating series test, in order for it to converge, it has to decrease in magnitude to zero, which this one doesn't. So this diverges. Whoa. Hey, where are you going? There we go. Diverges. So we don't get this endpoint. All right, we didn't have the endpoint before, so we still don't have it. Okay, and then we want to try the other endpoint, hmm. x equals positive 1. What do you think? You think this one's going to work? Got a pretty good feeling about it. All right, n to the 1, or times 1 to the n minus 1 power. All right, this one's even worse because it doesn't even alternate here. This one is just equal to plug in a 1, plug in a 2 plug in a three, plug in a, yeah, it just goes, shoots off to infinity. So that one also diverges. So you don't get that endpoint either. And then notice then our interval of convergence and our radius of convergence is the same as the original here. That's interesting. All right, so back over here in the slideshow, there it is. That's exactly what we did. We did all that. And then again, notice that we're starting at n equals 0, or not 0, 1, because the derivative of the 1 was 0. That's where that first term actually went, or the 0th term actually went. right? And then performing the ratio test, lovely animations. There we go. So interval of convergence was from negative 1 to 1. Now, on example 7 here, we're going to do the same thing except for the antiderivative. So we'll expand it out and term by term take the antiderivative of that infinitely long polynomial. So f of x will be equal to, it's a 1, plus x plus x to the second power, x to the third, and so on. Okay, and now we're going to take the antiderivative, both sides, with respect to x, which means antiderivative of f of x with respect to x is equal to, I'm going to take the antiderivative of 1, it's x. Antiderivative of this x, add 1 to the power and then divide by it, it's x squared over 2 plus x to the 4th over 4, x to the 5th over 5. Wait, do I have all the terms right? Let's see. So that goes with that. So that's, oh, I missed one. What are you kidding? That's okay. Wow. All right. Well, if that's what you want to do. Plus 
x to the third over three. I fixed it and that needed to be a plus, right? We're not gonna all of a sudden switch signs right in the middle. All right, so the generic term then is, um, so it's just the power rule on that. So it's x to the, oh, I need some dot, dot, dot in there, plus x to the n plus one over n plus one, plus dot, dot, dot. Oh, but there's one more thing. We just took the antiderivative plus c. All right, so then whenever we go to generalize this and write this as a summation, this came from an n equals zero, and we still have an n equals zero term, so we're going to keep it n equals one, n equals two. Let's see if our n's all work out properly. If I stick a one in here, so one plus one gives me a two there, and then a two on the bottom. If I stick in a two, two plus one is three, three on the bottom, so that works out. So we're going to keep the same exact index that we had before. So this antiderivative of f of x dx is equal to summation for an n equals zero to infinity of x to the n plus one term over n plus one. Oh, you know what we forgot? You usually don't put the plus c out here because then it's confusing. Where does that plus c go? And it, Am I adding a constant every single time? No. So what we do instead is scooch this thing over and then take this constant out over here and then just put it right up front. All right. All right, so what's left to do? We still need to find the interval of convergence using the ratio test. Uh, use that same one. So the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value, this one is a fraction, so we'll just multiply by the reciprocal. So add one to each of your exponents, or each of your n's. So I'm gonna have x to the n plus one plus one, two, over n plus one plus one, n plus two times, flip it, n plus 1 over x to the, uh, just n plus 1, right? Boop. Okay, and then cancel like crazy. Well, first of all, this n plus 1, n plus 2, nothing cancels the, out there, but they're positive numbers, so we can pull that thing out, and then we'll subtract our exponents here. So limit n plus 1 over n plus 2, absolute value of x to the n plus 2 over, what am I doing? Why don't I just subtract my exponents here? So n plus 2 minus the n plus 1, the n's will go away, and then I essentially just have a 2 minus 1, so it's the first power. Yes. Okay, so just like before, L'Hopital's rule would say that the limit of this part is just equal to 1, and then we're just left with that absolute value of x. Then by the ratio test, that must be less than one. And then here is our familiar interval. Once again, I do have to check the endpoints because that guy, this thing is not geometric. Why is it not geometric? Because it's not a constant number, some sort of like, um, I remember a times some common ratio raised to a power. Okay, uh, so I do have to check it. Let's check each one of these things. It's probably not going to converge. I mean, come on. The other one didn't. All right, uh, let's stick in a negative one here. You don't have to worry about the plus c, just a negative one right in there. So you'd have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Up top, a negative 1 to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1. It's an alternating series. The alternator, uh, the terms are positive starting here with 0, so all of that is good. And if you were to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1, that definitely goes to 0, so there's a check for that one. And then as far as it goes, let's see, our, our terms have to be decreasing in magnitude. So is it true that 1 over n plus 1 plus 1, so n plus 2, is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1? Uh, yeah, we have a bigger denominator here, so this is a smaller number than that one. So, ooh, look at that, it converges. 
which means we actually gained ourselves an endpoint. We gained it right there at negative one. That's interesting. All right. Well, let's try the other one. Let's try the other endpoint. X is equal to positive one. Maybe we get that one too. So here, summation n equals zero to infinity positive one to the n plus one power over n plus one. Well, up here, this no longer alternates. And then we have something that you can compare to a uh, divergent P series, really, n plus one, right? If you compare this to the harmonic series this thing is going to diverge also if yeah yeah so that's that's pretty much enough on this one so diverges all right so let's go back up to our interval of convergence that's right here so notice that you have the same radius because the original thing was from negative one, the original interval for f of x before we integrated was from negative one to positive one. The interval or the radius is the same, but the interval is not exactly the same because we gained ourselves an endpoint. So that sometimes happens whenever you integrate. So let's summarize all of this after we watch all of this stuff play out one more time, because why not? Watch this at 16 times speed converges. All right, so our interval of convergence, we gained our endpoint. So here then are some properties of series as functions. So first of all, we have our power series. And notice that we have our power series instead centered at C instead of at zero, which you know you can totally do. We're going to say that it has some finite and positive radius of convergence here. And then here is our interval of convergence. And we're saying that this power series is both continuous and differentiable. So we can take the derivative of this thing and notice that we can just take the derivative on the nth term and we would get the same thing if we term by term uh, expanded that thing out. Now notice again, uh, term by term derivative that we start at n equals one instead of n equals zero here because when we take the derivative of that first term here, this guy goes down to zero. All right then, this thing has the exact same radius of convergence, but it may not have the same interval because the endpoints might be different. Okay, we can do the same thing for taking the antiderivative. You can take it term by term as you see over here, or you can just take the antiderivative of the nth term here. This one still starts at n equals zero because when you take the antiderivative of that first term, it gains an x right there, of course. And then don't forget your plus c. <clears throat> so if on some of these, so if you have yourself an, an initial condition, you can actually solve for that C, as you'll see when we do another exercise coming up in the same exact lesson, something to look forward to. Okay, this one again has the exact same radius of convergence, but not necessarily the same interval of convergence. So here are those pro tips kind of written out here. Essentially, a power series, it's going to behave like an infinitely long polynomial. So you can take its derivative, you can take its antiderivative either on the nth term or on uh, term by term. And the radius of convergence is going to remain the same whenever we differentiate or when we integrate the same as the original series. However, the interval of convergence could possibly be different because of the behavior at the endpoints, so you'll have to check them.